problem is that those of us who have strong voices often will use the strength of our voice to compensate for or to hide a genuine connection to thought and feeling. I want to ask you about your relationship with Linklater and Shakespeare. So what is that relationship for you? Because I know that that is so fundamental to the underpinning foundations of the Shakespeare Ensemble. Tell us a little bit about what that is and tell us Hmm. more about how that relationship comes together. Sure, sure. Full disclosure, I am a designated Linklater voice teacher. Um, there's, uh, there's a few of us in Australia now. There's six or eight of us in Australia, two in Queensland, uh, another who's from Queensland but living uh, down south, and two more in Queensland who are actually in training. They're close, and one of them who has been in our shows and directed our shows, that's Joe Loth. So within the next year Great. and a half, she should also be a designated Linklater teacher. As I said, she's acted with us, directed for us, done a lot of stuff with us. Anyway... Okay, what is it? So Kristen Linklater, who passed away about 10 Mm. months ago uh, in her 80s, um, rather suddenly, um, was a voice teacher and director, but really famous as a voice teacher. Uh, originally, well, originally from Orkney in Scotland, trained in, you know, the academies of drama in England, um, and then ran away to the United States. Because uh, at the time, which would have been the, around 1970, maybe, maybe a little earlier, I'm not, don't remember, um, A lot of people in Britain were feeling that Britain and especially British theatre was getting very insular, very staid, quite um, not just aesthetically, but also like in order to achieve anything, you had to be of a certain class and all that sort of stuff. And people still talk about the class ceiling in British theatre. Anyway, uh, America was seen as the land of opportunity, as it was by many in in the middle uh, part of the 20th century there, and in many ways I'm sure it was. So she ran away to the States and where uh, she started to marry this very precise technical British training um, with what was in sway in the United States, which was a more... Um, what some people call bastardized Stanislavski, which was that kind of school of naturalism, emotional truth. Um, And the story she tells uh, or told is that it was her second day there and um, Elia Kazan actually called the place she was staying um, and said, are you Kristen Linklater? Um, I hear you're a voice teacher. Uh, I got a problem with my actors. And so she went to one of his rehearsals where he was, you know, my actors were people like you know Marlon Brando and so on, um, these great emotional actors. And they were performing in the Lincoln Centre. And the problem, as Kazan saw it, was they're doing this incredible, really moving, really emotionally true, connected work, but it's this big. Mm. And you can't hear them beyond the second row. And when I get them to be louder so that you can hear them at the back of the theatre, they lose all that emotional connection. So this kind of, um, and the reason Kristen told that story is because some of that really encapsulates where her work is. Her first book was called Freeing the Natural Voice. And I wish that it had been called Freeing Your Natural Voice because so many people have misunderstood Mm -hmm. it and going, what do you mean the natural voice? It's not like there's one universal natural voice. No, she never said that. The book's called Freeing the Natural Voice. I like to think of it as Freeing Your Natural Voice. And the basic idea is that our... Our ability to fully express our interior life, our thoughts and feelings, which is something that Shakespeare demands constantly. One of the things about Shakespeare is you never have to guess what the characters are thinking and feeling because they are telling you what they're thinking and feeling and they never stop telling you what they're thinking and feeling (laughs) and they never lie about it. Or if they do, they do a Richard III and go, oh, here's what I'm about to do. Watch this. I'm about to lie. And then you have this scene and then they leave. And he goes, see that? I just lied. Um, Yeah, but by and large, it's it's this truth-telling and deep, like powerful, it's it's about the inner life, the strong feelings, the extreme thoughts and feelings. Um, But 
uh, uh, Kristen's thesis was that we learn for better or worse, and sometimes it's for better, um, as a process, as part of our process of, of socialization, to diminish our voices, to either not speak about these things, or when we do, to keep it quite small, and, you know, rather than having a big cry, we we'll do this thing, you know, which, and so the actors had come to think, oh, being sad means holding everything in. Whereas an actor, especially a stage actor, actually needs to let that out and let it out to the back row, not by shouting, right? mm. which is what they were doing. Like, oh, you want us to be heard in the back row? And they'd start pushing and shouting. And the moment you do that, you actually cut the connection off. Yep. So it's actually about being big and relaxed and open. And that's what all of her work about is about. Freeing is a key word. It's not mm. making the natural voice or projecting the natural voice. In fact, I... When people say, I need help with my projection, one of the things I do at the very beginning of my voice classes is say, write the word projection on a piece of paper, now burn it, and never say that <laughs> word again. Right? That is Unless you're talking about a data projector, yeah, because project means to throw forward. That is to, to push and to demonstrate and to shh and to not really reveal. When we get pushy with our voices, we're not revealing our inner lives. We're trying, we're showing something manufactured. So that's her work and, and why it's relevant to Shakespeare. I came to, well, I came to Shakespeare via a very long roundabout way. And it was actually only after I accepted that hmm, maybe there's something to this Shakespeare thing. Okay. Um, that there was some voice training available. And I thought, I've never really done voice training. And I was cursed, as Kristen herself said to me. She said, um, you have a very strong voice. And I said, thank you. And she said, it's not a compliment. <laughs> um, <laughs> because she also had a very strong voice. And when I was in school, I would get cast as things like Sir Thomas More, you know, in Man for All Seasons, because my teacher said, you have a very trustworthy voice. Oh. You know, I not only have a face for radio, apparently I also have a voice for radio. But um, the, uh, uh, where does that come from, the trust? You know, so those were sort of natural things. So it never, I have a strong voice and a trustworthy voice. I don't need voice training. Ha, 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 ha. Um, because it meant that there were certain parts of my voice that I wasn't accessing or letting out. Like the, the part of my voice that, that is, is a little bit scared and uncertain you know, which is really useful as an actor, um, less so as an FM radio pronou uh, yeah. <laughs> announcer. Um, so, uh, yeah, so Kristen said to me, you have a strong voice, it's not a compliment. And she said, yeah, the problem is that those of us who have strong voices often will use the strength of our voice to compensate for or to hide a genuine connection to thought and feeling. Um, and so that's the exploration and why Shakespeare, because as I said, Shakespeare's characters, that's all they're doing. And this is why the, um, the old school or Victorian uh, stentorian approach to Shakespeare, you know, to be or not to be, that is the, I'm asleep. I'm, yeah. and we're only half a line into the speech and I'm asleep. Why? Because it's here's something I prepared earlier, yeah. and it's listen to my technique. Sometimes yeah. Shakespeare's language is is dangerous in its power because it's so intellectually rigorous that you can think that's all there is to it, but that will put people to sleep. Yeah. Or there are actors who go, wow, this is really passionate, and then all they'll do is the passion and the emotional connection. That is, they'll... I'm showing you that I'm in distress. Yeah, but I can't understand the thing you're saying, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, it can't be just one of those things. Yeah, fascinating. Um, and that's the great thing about, about Linklater is she is and her technique is rigorous in its pursuit of both connection and clarity. I mean, I have, this isn't Linklater, this is me. I talk about um, the three the tripod, the foundations of Shakespeare, if not all acting, are the three Ps, P for pencil finny, but that is not one of the Ps, which are passion, precision, and presence. Yeah. So passion is about speaking your heart. Precision is about this thing here. And presence is, you could argue it's about the gut, but it's about the body because theatre is physical. Um, 
you know, and, and someone can be kind or that you can't really be emotionally connected if you're physically absent, right? But you can still do a, a show of emotional connection, which is what I see a lot. And you can be intellectually clear, but kind of unenergized and, and, and not present, not in your yeah. body, as we say. Shakespeare really is just the words. You know, that's, that's what Shakespeare left us, was a bunch of words, black marks, you know, to be interpreted and spoken. The, the characters weren't original to him, for the most part. The plots Not weren't true. original yeah. to him. He just improved them. It's the way that those characters and plots are presented in the language. So if the language is not alive, you're not really doing Shakespeare. Big thanks to Rob Pensilfini, Artistic Director of the Queensland Shakespeare Ensemble. Now, QSE do amazing work with Shakespeare, and you can learn a little bit more about that through the links in the description below. And down there will also be a link to the mini playlist of all the videos that I shot with Rob around aspects of Shakespeare. He is a wealth of knowledge, so definitely check that out. Uh, it would be great if you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't already, share it with someone who you think might need it. Thanks very much. Have a look at some of these other Shakespeare videos, and I will see you there.